Hello guys and welcome back to Hiring Guru Official. Our today's video is going to be very special as I'll show you how you can crack any job interview in a single attempt. The details provided in this video are so powerful that if you prepare for an interview the way I've explained, you can literally force or convince the hiring manager to hire you. The entire video is based on two key ideas. First, make them listen to what they want to hear. And secondly, if you think and prepare like a candidate, then the results will be what the hiring manager wants. But if you think and prepare like the hiring manager, then the results will be what you want. And in this video, you will literally learn everything that it takes to clear an interview in a single attempt with ease. Let's get started. Guys, have you ever wondered why tell me something about yourself question is always the first question asked in an interview? And why interviews usually end with questions like, Salary kitna loge bhaiya? Discuss kar le. Typically, almost har interview makes specific interview format follow kiya jata hai, which is divided into different stages where question after question, recruiters continue to gather required information about you and based on your answers, they make a final decision on whether to hire you or not. And if you really want to get hired, you must first understand the interview format and start thinking like a hiring manager by focusing on the key things that matters to them a lot and prepare accordingly. So basically, during interviews, recruiters mainly focus on three important things. And if they do not find these three things to be okay in a candidate, they don't hire them. I'll explain each of these three things to you in detail one by one. Let me start with the easiest point first so that I can set the stage and ensure that we're on the same page. So our first point is eligibility check. Let me quickly go ahead and explain you what does eligibility check means. Why does it matter so much to the recruiters and the type of questions that typically ask to gather the necessary information? Guys, eligibility check means making sure that the candidate who is attending the interview is suitable and his profile matches the job requirements. So it is absolutely necessary for the company and the HR to conduct an eligibility check because different job profiles may have different eligibility criteria. In some processes, undergraduate freshers are eligible, while in others, only graduates or people with minimum six months to one year of experience is mandatory. Let me share three real-time situations to make you understand why it is so crucial. Number one, imagine a situation where a candidate is applying as an experienced professional who claims to have more than 30 months of relevant experience. He clears all the interview rounds and at the time of documentation, he discloses that he doesn't have an experience letter from his previous organization. Let's assume he absconded or left without intimating anyone. Since he cannot arrange the relevant papers to prove his experience, the company won't be able to offer him a salary hike or this position as it was only for the experienced candidates. Thus, his profile will be automatically declined and he won't be able to join the organization. Let's take a look at another example. In this second situation, a graduate fresher clears an interview and during documentation, the company gets to know he has a couple of backlogs and he is yet to appear for the same. Again, he can't join the company since he is not yet graduated. In a third situation, candidate lives in a non-hiring zone, but he wasn't aware of the same. And it was never discussed during an interview and since he lives with his family, he can't relocate. Hence, he would also not be able to join the company. Guys, I've just taken these three cases from real life scenarios to help you understand the day-to-day -day recruitment challenges. Trust me, companies may or recruitments may daily as a bohat sari cases aate hain with different issues where candidates profile simply doesn't match or fulfill the job requirements. That's why it is absolutely necessary for the companies to perform the baseline eligibility check right at the beginning by asking relevant eligibility check questions to identify such cases and decline them in the initial stage to save time, resources and efforts for everyone and ensure that the efforts are done only on the right candidates. Now let's quickly take a look at the type of questions HRs typically ask to conduct the baseline eligibility check. So to experienced candidates, they may ask questions like, what and how much experience do you have? This question helps them understand if the candidate has the relevant and required experience for a particular job profile. Second, when did you leave your last organization? This is to understand the employment gaps in the profile. As in certain cases, few companies ek specific time ke baad gaps consider nahi karti and they will decline the profile. Question number three, do you have all the required education and work experience documents, including your mark sheets and experience letter? These questions are asked to get the precise information on the doc's status of the candidate and are very, very crucial. Next question is, where do you stay? This is to check if the candidate stays within the hiring zone. Guys, I've already created a list of some eligibility check questions for both freshers and experienced candidates. Jockey screen pe abhi show honge. Please take a moment to read them or take a screenshot to read them later. Guys, remember, typically, 
the baseline eligibility check is done by the HRs. And usually, interviews consist of two major rounds, HR round and operations round. I'm excluding any written tests or verbal assessments for the time being because those rounds are different and their briefing is different. And as I said earlier, we'll start with the easiest point first. And now it's time for us to move on to our second point where the interview is real game start. Hoti hai. So our second and third point is going to be very crucial from the operations or final round point of view. Guys, by the way, HR round has some other important questions hai, which I'll cover right after explaining point number two. Basically, the briefing for the ops round questions in our next point also includes a discussion of the HR round questions. So I thought of not wasting time by explaining the same thing twice. So our point number two is skill check. As the name suggests, they will assess your skills, most importantly, your customer handling and communication skills. Since you'll be applying for an international process where your key responsibilities will be to interact with international customers through calls or through chats or through emails, they would definitely like to check how comfortable you are with English. This includes checking your grammar and thought process. Thought process means your ability to express your thoughts or ideas through words. Can you actually express them through words? So even if you're going for an on-voice process, they will check your communication skills because you'll have to interact with customers in English on a real-time basis through non-voice channels. Both sides candidates will think that non-voice process in English is not good enough, but that's not true. Because it is globally believed that someone who can speak well would be able to write well too. And the fastest way of assessing somebody's communication skills is by engaging them in a conversation. At the same time, I have a little bit of a mixed opinion because I know so many candidates out there who can write very well but can't speak equally good. But that's probably not the way companies think. And that's exactly is the reason why HR and operations round are conducted verbally rather than in writing. Anyways, let's check out a few questions which they may ask to check your comp skills. Let me start with the experienced candidates questions. Guys, tell me something about yourself question is typically the first question asked by the recruiters in an interview. This question is very important and you should prepare very well as it provides them with a lot of key information like qualification, work experience, confidence level, communication skills and more. So based on the candidate's response, they decide how much time they should spend with the candidate to check their skills further. So a well-prepared and rehearsed introduction leads them to focus less on communication skills. While a shaky one where candidate lacks the confidence and have broken speech pattern. Broken speech means candidate adak adak ke bol and he is not able to express himself properly. So all these issues create doubt in the recruiter's mind about your ability to communicate well. So unko lagta hai ki jo itne basic question ka answer properly nahi kar sakta usse communication skills khatam honge. So they either stop the interview right there or if at all they decide to move ahead with the interview. They'll start asking other questions to deep dive into your communication abilities. So generally, in order to check your comms, they will start asking open-ended questions where you cannot say a simple yes or a no or give one or two word answers and try to close the conversation quickly. You will literally be forced by the recruiters to give elaborated answers. Open-ended question poochne ka idea yehi hota hai ki aap jitna zyada bologe, utna better hoga unke liye aapki grammar, vocabulary or overall communication skills check karne ka. So if you really want to avoid all this situation, there is no way under the great heavens that you can mess up with your tell me something about yourself question. It has to, has to be prepared very well if you want to avoid all these situations. So to be on a safer side, let me give you three more questions which you should prepare thoroughly along with your self-introduction if you really want to win their confidence. Questions are like, why do you want to work with our organization? This question helps them in checking your communication plus how much you know about them. Another one is, why should we hire you? Again, the purpose remains the same. They want to check your communication skills and how well you can sell yourself in an interview. Plus, be ready with the questions related to your weaknesses or strengths. And if you're applying as a fresher, then you must prepare all these questions which I just discussed along with the questions like, what do you understand by customer service? Or why do you want to work with BPOs? Guys, the situation is usual or normal. But if you have a candidate ke communication skills per seriously doubt, lagta hai, so they starting to use candidate for a topic de hai bolne ke liye for at least a couple of minutes so that they can check his grammar and his thought process to save their time. Guys, I won't verbally cover the answers of all these questions which I just discussed because if I start discussing answers, then this video will become too long. By the way, I've already created separate videos on all these questions where I've explained everything in details and all these topics or videos are available on my channel. I will share the link of all these videos in the description box for you to check out. 
But if you wish, you can visit my channel and watch all these videos later. So by asking all these different questions, not only will they get a fair idea about your communication skills, but at the same time, they get a lot of other information about you as well, like your confidence level, how mature you are as an employee, what sets you apart from others, and what you can bring to the table for them, and so on. Once you watch all these videos that I'm talking about, you will get the exact information that I'm talking about. So, Joby questions we discussed here at this point, I have created a list of all those questions and few additional questions. You can either pause this video to read them or take a screenshot and read them later. Guys, just before we move on to our next and final point, I want to tell you something very important. Recruiters do not ask the same question to every candidate. This baat ko thoda sa logic laga kar samajna. Just as every profile and candidate is different, HR and operations manager bhi alag alag hote hain. Unki soch alag hoti hai, unki approach alag hoti hai, unke entry lene ki technique alag hoti hai. And each recruiter has their own favorite set of questions they prefer to ask the candidate to gather the necessary information. Basically, question changes according to the candidate's experience, their profile and the process that they are applying for. For example, if a candidate has employment gap, then the recruiter's main focus will be on finding out the exact reason for the gap and they will ask questions accordingly. Similarly, for someone who wants to change his career or industry completely, then they will ask him a different set of questions altogether. Like why they are leaving their current profession, challenges he or she may have faced in that sector, what were his roles and responsibilities, why they are more interested in this sector and so on. So interviews may poochhe jane wale questions literally may bahut sare factors pe depend karte hain and that's the reason I generally do not believe in giving out a random list of questions to prepare for an interview as the same questions does not apply to everyone every time everywhere my entire focus right now is on making you understand the recruiter's thinking and psychology and what and how we should prepare for an interview let's move on to our next and final point point number 3 stability check Guys, after skill check, what matters the most to the operations manager is the stability. Trust me, you'll be thoroughly grilled by the operations manager on this aspect. Stability check ka matlab hai, ye check karna that how long the candidate will work with our company or what reasons can be there for them to leave our company. So the big question is, why does stability even matter so much to the companies? Why don't companies just hire a new resource and fill the vacant position? So basically, hota ke hai, when an employee joins any company, he undergoes 2-3 to three months of regress training where they learn the necessary skills and procedures required for their role. And the best part is, it will be a paid training. On top of that, companies candidate ke saath koi contract bhi sign nahi karti, which means they are free to leave the company at any time. Now just imagine a situation where a candidate joins the company, undergoes the paid training, and after his training, he realizes that this is not his cup of tea, and he ends up leaving the job. So, in such a case, mein, the company loses out on the entire training cost of the candidate, that includes his 2-3 to three months of salary plus other admin expenses like his transport and training costs and so on. That's why the recruiters keep a close watch on the candidate's stability since they don't want to hire someone who is not going to stick with the company for a longer period of time. So in order to check the stability of the candidate, they ask a set of questions which are directly linked with the stability concerns. Let me share some example questions along with the reasons why these questions are asked. I start with the most easy questions start karta to make you understand and to create the required base. Question is very small and easy, sa hai, but it's actually a tricky one. Are you okay with night or rotational shifts? Guys, to be honest with you, not everyone is okay with rotational shifts. Some candidate claims that their family doesn't allow them to work in night shifts and some can't work during the night due to the health issues. So basically, what happens is that when candidate in questions ka answer de hota hai, and in his response, if they get a little hint that the candidate is not sounding confident about working in odd hour shifts and is more inclined towards working in general or day shifts, then they proactively decline such profiles because they don't want to spend money on someone's training who cannot work as per the business requirements. And guys, to be honest with you, take it as an advice. If you're not comfortable with shifts, then don't opt for international process jobs because in such processes, you are required to provide support to UK, US, Australian or Canadian customers who lives in a completely different time zone where you'll have to work as per their preferred time. They won't work as per yours. Don't say yes right now for the sake of getting a job offer. In international processes, shifts usually changes every month and you never know your training may happen during the night. Another question that is directly connected with the stability concern is how much salary are you looking for? Guys, this is another big stability check question because candidates usually need jobs for a small percent of salary hike 
और एट टाइम्स कैंडिडेट्स रिक्रूटर्स के साथ बहुत एग्रेसिवली सैलरी नेगोशिएट करना स्टार्ट कर देते हैं विच स्टार्ट रेजिंग क्वेश्चन अबाउट दिस स्टेबिलिटी रिक्रूटर्स को लगता है कि कैंडिडेट इज नॉट ओके विद दू ऑफर्ड सैलरी एंड आफ्टर क्रैकिंग देयर इंटरव्यू कैंडिडेट मे ऑल्सो ट्राई फॉर अदर कंपनीज एंड द मोमेंट दे गेट अ बेटर ऑप्शन दे विल ज्वाइन दम गाइज आम नॉट सेंग दैट यू शुड नॉट नेगोशिएट योर सैलरी बट दर इज अ प्रॉपर वे ऑफ डूइंग सो गाइज पॉइंट टू बी नोटेड फॉर एग्जेक्यूटिव लेवल ऑफ फ्रंट लाइन हायरिंग कंपनीज ऑफर हैव अ प्री डिसाइडेड सैलरी रेंजेस फॉर बोथ फ्रेशर्स एंड एक्सपीरियंस कैंडिडेट्स और मैंने कंपनीज को बहुत कम देखा है सैलरी पर एक्सेप्शन देते हुए बिकॉज दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू एक्सीड देयर मैक्सिमम सैलरी रेंज सो इट्स एब्सोल्यूटली ओके इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नेगोशिएट योर सैलरी बट जस्ट मेक श्योर यूर नॉट साउंडिंग टू पोशी ऑल्सो जस्ट मेक श्योर दट योर सैलरी नेगोशिएशन फॉल्स विद इन द प्री डिसाइडेड रेंज ऑफ द कंपनी एंड सम हाउ इफ यू फील दैट द सैलरी ऑफर बाय द कंपनी एज पर द जॉब डिस्क्रिप्शन इज नॉट मैचिंग योर एक्सपेक्टेशन so you should not originally apply for such jobs since the company cannot fulfill your expectations but if you have still applied for the job despite knowing all the situations this means i'm assuming that you are somewhat interested so focus on getting the best salary by negotiating nicely but avoid being pushy let's move on to our next question what are your future plans this is another crucial but a very blunt and a tricky stability check question blunt and tricky means yahan par hiring manager aap se baat guma kar pooch raha hai How long would you work with us? आपको भी क्वेश्चन थोड़ा सा अलग लग रहा होगा बट वॉन्स यू आंसर दिजिनल क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग योर फ्यूचर प्लान ऑटोमेटिकली गेट दी आंसर टू हेज हिटन क्वेश्चन और ये सेम क्वेश्चन बहुत अलग अलग तरीकों से ही पूछा जाता है लाइक वे डू यू सी योर सेल्फ फाइव ईयर्स फ्रॉम नाउ और वट डू यू वॉन्ट टू अचीव ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन हैव वन पर्पज एंड दैट इज टू फाइंड आउट हाउ लॉन्ग वुड यू वर्क विद अस लेट मी एक्सप्लेन यू थ्रू एन एग्जाम्पल इमेजिन यू ओन अ स्मॉल और मीडियम साइज बिजनेस एंड वॉन्ट टू हायर फ्यू एम्प्लॉयज फॉर कस्टमर सर्विस रोल्स So during an interview you ask one of the candidates about his future plans and the confident and ambitious candidate says I have some excellent startup plans in my mind but unfortunately I'm not getting any financing right now so for the time being I plan to kick start my career in this industry and support myself and my family financially while continue to work hard to fulfill my dreams another candidate says I want to go to Canada for further studies but as you know visa formalities and finding the right university may take some time So for the time being I want to get into this job to learn and improve my skills. Guys trust me I can share 20 more such examples where people say a lot of creative and ambitious things during interviews to sound productive and impressive. Now it's time for you to think as a business owner considering your training costs resources time and effort you would invest in candidates training would you like to hire someone who doesn't consider this profession or your company or the profile he's applying for as their ultimate career. I guess you already got your answer. ऐसे कैंडिडेट्स जॉब्स बहुत जल्दी छोड़ देते हैं एंड दे विल गिव यू अ सीरियस फाइनेंशियल लॉस सो हायरिंग मैनेजर विल सम वॉट आस्क सिमिलर क्वेश्चन टू फाइंड आउट इफ यू प्लान टू स्टे विद दैम फॉर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम और लीड द जॉब सून आई नो इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू प्रिडिक्ट हाउ लॉन्ग अ पर्टिकुलर कैंडिडेट विल स्टे एंड एट टाइम्स इवन द मोस्ट स्टेबल लुकिंग कैंडिडेट्स सरप्राइज इम्प्लॉयर्स विद देयर रेजिग्नेशन बट माई पॉइंट इज सम वन हू प्रोएक्टिवली टॉक्स अबाउट डिफरेंट करियर्स और अपॉर्चुनिटीज they are more likely to leave jobs because they will keep on exploring options outside and the moment they get the right opportunity they will for sure say bye bye to you compared to others who see this industry as their career guys i'm not saying that you should lie during an interview all i'm trying to make you understand is use your head be a little diplomatic hame unko wo sunana hai jo wo sunna chahte hain jaise maine video ke starting mein bola tha make them listen to what they want to hear There is no point in discussing plans that are still in pipeline or may take some time to materialize. Instead, frame your answer to reflect that this line of business offers good career and growth opportunities and that is the reason you are there for an interview. Hope this explanation must have added some value. Let's move on to our next crucial stability check question. The reason for leaving your last job. Reason of leaving is another important and a tricky stability check question for experienced candidates. Companies often believe that your reason for leaving your last job could also be the reason of leaving their company as well. So let me share three mistakes that you must avoid while answering this question. Number one, avoid criticizing or speaking negatively about your previous boss or company. If you badmouth your previous employer, your new boss might think you will do the same when you will leave their company. So it's always good to stay professional and diplomatic. Number 2 is don't make complaints about coworkers or colleagues and try to prove that they were the main reason for leaving your previous job. Remember, employers are looking for problem solvers and not those who bring problems. Number 3 is well, it's okay to talk about heavy workload but avoid making it sound like you could not handle stress or pressure. 
as it may raise concerns about your ability to handle challenges during day to day responsibilities guys i know har kisi ka job chhodne ka reason alag hota hai but us reason ko dhang se samjhana bhi bahut important hota hai and to help you give a good answer i've already created a detailed video on this topic which covers all the crucial mistakes to avoid while answering this question and i've provided three top answers to help you justify your separation guys our next question is about employment gaps so another crucial thing that they pay close attention to is any gaps in your employment history or between finishing your studies and till now so if you have employment gaps this may also go against you because as soon as hiring managers receive a profile with gaps it becomes a little alarming for them as stability is something that they're looking for and they do their best to investigate thoroughly before proceeding guys somewhere or other companies bhi ye baat jante hain that at the executive level people change jobs very frequently कुछ कैंडिडेट्स थोड़ी सी सैलरी हाइक के लिए कंपनी छोड़ देते हैं कुछ को बेटर जॉब प्रोफाइल मिल जाती है और किसी को दूसरी कंपनी से वर्क फ्रॉम होम का ऑप्शन मिल जाता है एंड दे आल्सो एंड अप लीविंग द प्रीवियस कंपनी सो ऐसे कैंडिडेट्स को ये पता है दैट दे कैन नॉट लिस्ट ऑल दीज कंपनीज ऑन दिस सीवी एंड जस्टिफाई वाई दे चेंज सो मेनी जॉब्स इन सच अ शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सो दे प्ले स्मार्ट दे रिमूव ऑल दीज एक्सपीरियंसिस एंड शो एम्प्लॉयमेंट गैप because they know employment gap justify karna is rather more easier rather than explaining why they changed so many jobs in such a short period of time aur wo employment gap ko justify karne ke liye ya to medical ya koi person reasons bol dete hain and since recruiters have years of experience they quite often can figure it out who is lying and who is not through candidate's answer and his body language since the company wants to ensure that the attrition is minimized and the training cost is not wasted they will do their best to find out the exact reason behind the gap and will start asking relevant questions guys aapke jo bhi reasons ho gap ke you can steal my strategy and keep these three things in mind number 1 if you have employment gap consider yourself to be sitting at the top of the stability concern list no matter how good your communication skills are until you win the credibility of the recruiter they won't let you proceed so your entire focus should be on addressing the concern first and the hiring manager would be eager to learn what exactly were you doing during this time so the best thing to do would be to highlight any productive activity that you did during that time aise mein sabse badhiya hota hai ya to kisi course ke bare mein batana certification ke bare mein volunteering or freelancing whatever you did during the time you can highlight that so show how these courses or experiences that you gained during the time contributed to your growth and show your eagerness to return to workplace and contribute effectively Guys, number two is also very important. The reason for gap should be such that it gives the impression that you wanted to work, but there were situations or circumstances beyond your control that forced you to step down from your employment responsibilities. Guys, jitna achhe se achha reason ab gap ko justify karne ke liye soch sakte ho, aapke liye utna achha hoga. So think of a good reason that not only explains but also highlights your ability to handle difficulties. Remember. this reason or explanation is extremely important for you as it can either make or break your chances of getting hired so choose the reason of employment gap very wisely and sensibly and most importantly try to convey it effectively now let's talk about how freshers can justify any gap between their studies and till date use the same strategy i just shared explain how you use that time productively like in online courses certifications internships or voluntary work related to your interests be confident aur bas ek cheez ka dhyan rakhna hiring manager ka concern hai candidate's stability so proactively apne answer mein you must specify that you have decided that this industry is going to be your ultimate career and you want to kick start your career journey with a brand like them guys now it's time for me to share a list of all these questions which we have discussed in this video so far for freshers and experienced candidates सारे क्वेश्चंस के लिस्ट आपकी स्क्रीन पे शो रही होगी यू कैन इधर पॉज दिस वीडियो टू रीड देम और टेक अ स्क्रीनशॉट एंड रीड देम एज पर योर कन्वीनियंस एज आई मेंशन अर्लियर द क्वेश्चंस कंप्लीटली डिपेंड्स ऑन द कैंडिडेट्स प्रोफाइल एंड बैकग्राउंड एंड बीइंग अ फाइनल डिसीजन मेकर ऑपरेशंस मैनेजर जो सही लगेगा आपकी प्रोफाइल के हिसाब से वो आपसे वैसे क्वेश्चन पूछने वाला है फॉर एग्जाम्पल ई मे आस्क यू कुड यू प्लीज एक्सप्लेन योर प्रीवियस कंपनी प्रोसेस और के आर एज के आर एज मीन्स की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एरियाज Guys I honestly wanted to add a few more questions in this video but video already bahut lamba ho gaya so for now I'm adding some additional questions to this list which must be showing up on your screen but the good news is we have already covered more than 90% of probable questions they may ask in the interview I'll be back soon with part 2 where I'll brief you on pending or additional questions 
Guys, as I said earlier, I will share the video links of all the important questions in the description box which you can check out or else up the screen per teen important questions show you. Click on one of those videos and I'll start briefing you further. And yes, do not forget to subscribe to Hiring Guru Official and I'll see you in my next video for further briefing. Bye now.